Hey everybody, I want to welcome you back to another episode of Westminster Wednesday, where each week we are looking at one question from the Westminster Shorter Catechism, and we're exploring its significance for our lives today. And so today we come to question number six of the Catechism, and question number six asks this, how many persons are there in the Godhead? And the answer is, there are three persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one God, the same in substance, equal in power and glory. Now, uh, what this question points to is one of the most foundational doctrines of the Christian faith, and that is the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, the doctrine of the Trinity is a doctrine that is easy to state, but it is hard to understand. Simply stated, uh, the doctrine of the Trinity says that God is one in essence, or one in substance, but three in person. Uh, he is one in essence in that he is one God. There are not three gods. There is only one God. And yet at the same time, that one God exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And from the very beginning of the Christian church, this has been a foundational doctrine that Christians have believed and affirmed. Now, sometimes you will hear people who are skeptics today argue that the doctrine of the Trinity was made up uh, and that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in the Bible. Now, it is true that the word Trinity is not found in the Bible. You will not find the word Trinity in any of the books of the Bible. However, the concept of the Trinity is very clearly found in the Bible. Repeatedly, over and over again in the pages of Scripture, the Old Testament and the New Testament affirm that there is only one true God. And yet at the same time, we see throughout Scripture that that God exists in three persons. And Scripture affirms that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Spirit is God, and that those three are one. And so while the word Trinity is not found in the Bible, the concept of the Trinity is very clearly taught in the Bible. And Christians recognized this very early on in the church, and the word that they used to describe this reality was the word Trinity, that we worship a triune God. Now, I want you to understand a couple of things that are really important about the Trinity. First of all, the Trinity is something that sets Christianity apart from all of the other monotheistic religions that exist in the world. Sometimes you will hear people say uh, that all of the monotheistic religions worship the same God. They just call him by different names. Well, nothing could be further from the truth because Christians worship a triune God. We believe God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the other monotheistic religions would deny that. They would reject that. They would reject, in particular, that Jesus is the Son of God. And therefore, we are not talking about the same God when we talk about God versus the other monotheistic religions. We're talking about a God that is completely unique and has revealed himself in the Bible. Another thing we need to understand is that the doctrine of the Trinity is one of the foundational pillars of the Christian faith. That's why this doctrine is clearly stated in the earliest creeds of the church. If you look at the Apostles' Creed, if you look at the Nicene Creed, the doctrine of the Trinity is clearly stated there uh, because for 2,000 years, Christians have recognized that this doctrine is foundational for who God is. So that if you take the doctrine of the Trinity away, you no longer have Christianity. Or to state it differently, if you deny this doctrine, you cannot claim to be a Christian. That is how foundational this doctrine is. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that it is an easy doctrine to understand. Uh, many Christians have struggled and have wrestled for centuries with trying to understand how God could be both one and three at the same time. And if that's something that you've ever struggled with, then let me give you this encouragement today. Uh, part of the reason why we can't comprehend the Trinity is simply because we are trying to comprehend an infinite God. And as finite human beings, we will never be able to fully comprehend the infinite God. Um, I often ask people, 
Uh, would you want a God that you could fully understand? Would you want to worship a God that you could fully understand? I wouldn't want to worship a God like that because if I could fully understand who God was, then that would mean I would be on the same level as God. And a God who is on the same level as me would not be a God who is worthy of worship. And so we should expect that the almighty and infinite God would be beyond our full comprehension and beyond our full understanding because that is who God is. And so the next time you are struggling to understand the doctrine of the Trinity, let me encourage you, instead of allowing that to fill you with frustration, allow it to fill you with adoration. That this God is so beyond our human minds. He is so majestic. He is so glorious. He is so high that we can't fully understand this uh, uh, doctrine of who he is. But that doesn't mean it's a bad doctrine. It makes God all the more glorious. And even though we can't fully understand it, we can still affirm it just as Christians have for 2,000 years, that we affirm that God is one God. There is only one true God, and that God exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.